Welcome to Concussion Doc Podcast, episode 136. I'm on with Steve Broglio. He's going to talk a bit soon. And uh, But first, I would like to thank my sponsor, Head Check Health. So Head Check Health bridges the gaps in concussion care through simple, powerful technology. Door organizations like the Canadian Football, Canadian Football League, Track Factory Racing, the Canadian Junior Hockey League, Eastern Washington University, and Volleyball Canada. Rely on head check to continue to improve communication and optimize care. Visit headcheckhealth.com for more. And I and I guess also uh, uh, of course you can follow me on my social media. So I can just doc on Facebook, Twitter, and Shan. Um, my my website is concussiontalk.com, and there you'll find my store, which leads you to T Public, which is where I sign my. T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, posters, pose, not posters, not posters. Anyway, there's a bunch of stuff on the T public page. So before but now without all that garbage, I'll talk to Steve, who is kind of joining me to talk about the University of Michigan, University of Michigan Concussion Center, which is director. So uh Steve, uh, first of all, I if we're because I will ask you about your own background, but first just what is the what is the concussion center, and um, what do you what do you want? To, what are you trying to tell the people of the University of Michigan? So uh, the the faculty, staff, students, everybody, just we're trying to yeah. Answer. So so thanks, Nick. Um, appreciate the invitation to come and uh, and talk to you and your listeners here today. Um, so as you as you said um, in the intro, I'm I'm the director of the University of Michigan Concussion Center, and and we largely operate around three cores. Um, we have a research core, a clinical core, and then an outreach and engagement core. Um, the research core sort of speaks for itself. You know, we're, we're really interested in discovering new knowledge around um, concussion prevention and identification management, understanding long-term effects. Um, clinical core um, is through some of the clinical outlets here at, at University of Michigan. So there's a nurse port clinic, um, the adult and pediatric uh, emergency department. Uh, we work closely with our um, Department of Athletics. We work closely with Student Health and Rec Sports. Um, so another number of different units across campus that we work with to provide clinical care, whether it's um, largely athletes, I would say, is our, our expertise. But we do, um, you know, Rec Sport athletes. We do um, our varsity athletes, um, students slipping on the ice. Um, so all all comers, if you will. And then the third core is our outreach and engagement. We're um, really um, trying to. Uh, address health disparities around concussion and whether that's knowledge um, or access, um, you know, those are the sorts of things that we're, we're trying to tackle. Um, and we have great partnerships with our high school athletic association, um, Michigan Health and Human Services, Detroit Public Schools, uh, and then various other organizations across the country that we've um, collaborated with on different policy statements and documents. I think, um, to, to your question about kind of how we sit on campus, you know, we, we sort of see ourselves as a hub for all things concussion here at the university um, and trying to integrate research into clinical care, um, learning from clinical care, that like, what are the questions that come up in clinical care that can be addressed through research. Uh, and then, like I said, pushing, you know, good information out, um, whether that's to the public on a podcast like this, uh, or maybe uh, clinical providers to make sure that they have access to the most recent findings to improve their clinical practice. And so to excuse my ignorance of the of geography there, um, so you said Detroit Public Schools, but in all University of Michigan is in Lansing, right? And so- We are, we, the other school in Michigan is in Lansing. That's oh, Michigan, oh, State. Michigan State. Oh, is in Lansing. Totally yeah. fine. The, the other yeah, one. yeah. So we're in Ann Arbor. Uh, yeah, and so we're Detroit about in- yeah, we're about an hour outside of Detroit, so it's not too far. Um, okay. And actually, we have some people headed over uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, there's a, um, a safety town event that has a concussion portion to it. Um, and so we're going to support some of the work there um, tomorrow and on Thursday. Okay, so along with Detroit Public Schools, who I assume you work closely with, as you said, um, how big is the University of Michigan student population? We have our largest student body ever this year, uh, 51,000 and wow. a couple hundred, I think. Jeez. So uh, we're a good people. size. Yeah. What, 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 what do you think people, their students, I guess, as I'm talking about, they need to know the most about concussion that they don't know now. That if you had to get out, not at one point, because that's not fair. But uh, yeah. 
what they want, what should they know about concussion brain injury? Yeah, so I would say our, our student athletes are actually really well informed um, because many of them have come up uh, what I would term kind of the modern concussion era. Um, so as they came through high school sports, they they got exposure to a lot of information around around it. Um, so I think the student athletes are actually really well educated. I think the uh, the general student body, just because they don't deal with the yeah. deal with it on a day to day basis, I I just don't think they they have that exposure. So I think. The things that we always try to tell people is, you know, if you suspect you have an injury, stop doing what you're doing and go seek out medical care. Um, it's really clear that if you keep participating in your activity while you're concussed, that that makes things worse. It makes your recovery longer. Um, and even if that's a slip on the ice and then you're like headed to class, um, you know, we know that early uh, return to the classroom before you've had adequate rest is, is can be detrimental. So um, that's that's a bigger challenge because it's harder to reach the general student body than it is um, like a, a focus group like the athletes. Um, but that's the sort of thing that we uh, that we think about. Because I know Michigan, the University of Michigan, it's a very you know it's intense kind of this is maybe maybe a word you can use. Uh, student athlete like athletics university league is the best basketball in the ninety in the ninety. Now I'm not sure now, but I know they're doing well. Still doing still do well. Basketball, football. Very pop, very and um, hockey as well. It's easy. Maybe I know about hockey a bit, but I don't think I ever played it. But I didn't, I didn't ever. I never played it. But uh, weirdly, um. Anyway, but uh. So they, they, they. Do you see the athletes? And what you say? You see the athletes the most? Do they come to you, or are the teams involved with the teams involved with the you know, concussion center? Yeah. So um. Every every one of our teams on campus, and I think we have. Uh, we have 20 some odd sports. I'm not exactly sure the yeah. exact number, but every one of them has a, um, an athletic trainer um, or in Canada be an athletic therapist um, that works with the team. Uh, and then there's a, a physician um, that may oversee four five, six different sports. So there's multiple physicians that oversee all the, all the different sports. Um, the, the athletic trainers are present at, at every game in practice. So if there's a suspected event, then the athletic trainer can remove the athlete um, and then do the evaluation um, there on the sideline and make a decision as to whether or not the athlete should go back that day or whether they need to stay out. Um, you know, maybe it's very clear they have a concussion and they definitely aren't going to go back, or maybe they're just not sure. And they're going to just hold the athlete out of precautionary measures. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a very, um, we're very fortunate to have that type of structure here to have the, the broad, um, the broad coverage that we do. Um, and then when those athletes are identified, depending on how complex the case is, um, we may or may not see them. So the, the team physicians handle the vast majority um, of the concussion cases um, that happen with our student athletes. Um, but if it's a really complex case, they're not progressing like we would anticipate, um, that's when they would go over to our specialty clinic, Neurosport, um, and to get some further evaluation and um, kind of additional resources that they have. And I guess there's a dash a little about, about yourself and your background, but I saw your, the reason I first, I first reacted to after I read the article in the Washington Post, which you were, you did some commenting on and talking about Tua and Tag, Tag, Tagalo, Tagaboil, below, Tagaboil, Tagaboil, Tagaboil. I go with, I just go with Tua. I'm, Tua, I, I struggle yeah. with it too. Yeah. Take the mouthful. Tagaboil, well, uh, anyway, the Michigan, the uh, Miami quarterback. Yeah. Miami Dolphins quarterback who went down. Twice in in four days, and there's like the talk about those during the second infection drum, which of course is very scary. But um, so do you deal? Do you deal mostly? For, I guess well, first of all, start off with your. Could you start with your, your background, who you are, and then do you and the, where you did your education? You can see in front of me, but for the audience. Um, but also, but so do you deal mostly with football, or do you just sport just in general? You're just all yeah. In the area. So I, um, uh, I'll give a short version of my training. <laughs> yeah. I've been, I've been to a number of places. So, um, I, uh, I actually, um, I got my undergraduate degree from university of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, from there, I went to Pittsburgh, got my master's degree and then down to the university of Georgia for my doctorate. Um, and then I took my first faculty position at, um, university of Illinois in Champaign, uh, in 2006. And I was there for about five years. And then came to Michigan, University of Michigan in 2011 and been here for 11 or 12 years now. Um, 
I would say over my career, I, I definitely started, um, I, I did a lot of work with football early on. And oh. the reason for that is, is it's just, it's the highest risk sport for concussion. So if you're going to spend your time, you know, doing research, yeah. you know, you kind of biggest bang for your buck, as it were. And, um, you're, and you're in Georgia, so. Uh, well, yeah, so a little bit of Georgia, but this, I'm, I'm thinking actually mostly at Illinois. I spent a lot of time with high school football. Oh, yeah. um, when I came to Michigan, I, I kind of started in the football space, but then um, around 2014, um, myself and um, two of my colleagues, we were funded by the NCA and the Department of Defense to, to do a national study of concussion. Oh. And that actually involves um, every athlete, um, every, every varsity athlete at 30 different sites across the oh. country. So that was 26 or 28 different sports. And that's everything from football and ice hockey and lacrosse through um, track and golf and tennis, right? So it's every athlete, every varsity athlete at all the sites were eligible to participate. So um, we, we've really widened our net. Um, and then in addition, I should say, um, we had the four US military service academies involved. So Air Force and West Point, Navy and Coast Guard. A huge, a huge study. It's a big study. Um, and at those locations, every, every cadet on campus was eligible. So at a place like West Point, um, it's like 4,500 cadets a year or on campus. So we had varsity athletes at those locations. We had um, what we call non-varsity um, athletes, the, the general cadet body. Um, so that work has really kind of broadened the horizons on what we do. Um, so all varsity sports, but just military personnel, um, officers um, are, are what we're looking at now. So, um, you know, and, and there's different it turns out people, you know, different personalities go to different sports and that sort of influences yeah. risk and that influences recovery. Right, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because I'm making the thing your uh, your that of your biography which is on the concussion center homepage about yep. us page. Uh, mm -hmm. That you are a professional, you are you are a professional kinesiology of neurology and uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation. So yep. uh, where did so where did where did you? I know you said you, you said you went to Pittsburgh and Georgia for your training, but. Uh, but and and you yeah, had the research thing of your of this concussion center. So uh, how does that all tie in? Like, what research do you focus on? So just a study of this vast group of people. So yeah, yeah, great question. You know. Great question. So I would say early in my career, I spent a lot of time um, looking at um, different different ways to evaluate, or what were the best ways to evaluate a, an athlete on the sideline or in the clinic. And by today's standards, it seems like the things that we're doing now seem very obvious, um, but this was back in about 2000, 2005. Yeah. Um, we didn't have an understanding. There was not a unified approach to concussion evaluation like there is today. So I was trying to understand those things. I then shifted um, over to impact biomechanics. And this is a lot of the football work that I was talking about um, yeah. at the high school level. And so understanding which athlete kind of what's the, how many head impacts does an athlete take? How severe are those head impacts? Um, does it vary by player position? Does it vary by um, uh, the type of play? Is it an offensive play, a def defensive play? Um, we, we looked at it a number of different ways. And then this bigger study that I talked about a second ago, um, that one looked at the acute effects of injury initially. So understanding, trying to understand if the, the football athlete recovers at the same rate as the golfer, um, somebody with two, three, four prior concussions recovers at the some, same rate as somebody with their first injury um, and a lot of other little things in there. Um, now we're shifting towards long-term effects, which I think is what a lot of people are really interested in. So we, in the initial portions of the study, we enrolled about 55,000 individuals to participate. And we're starting to track a subset of those um, about 10 or 12,000 um, up to 10 years after they've graduated from their institution. Yes. Um, and the long-term goal is to keep tracking them all the way through the, yeah. through life. Um, and so we'll, we do two evaluations every, we do one evaluation, evaluation every three ish, two to three years. So two over five years for the current funding cycle. Um, and then, so we'll just keep, or the idea is to kind of keep tracking them over time and to understand, um, you know, who has long-term issues and then what characteristics kind of maybe predispose them to those issues. Right, because then, because as you as you mentioned, two thousand two thousand five, there was no real, not not just a concussion, just no real, no not not much known about brain brain injury in general, and uh, right. and so and uh, so these longer term studies are obviously 
essential, very important, but of course, they take long term. They take long time. And not going to people want people want answers. You know, right now, and they will I be the CD? Will I will I have trouble later in life? But they can not know until food, doctors can't to tell you for exactly for sure. No one can tell you for sure. It's going to happen because you got to wait to get the results of these studies, which of course have to take starting starting in say twenty twenty of two thousand five. If they started that early, which a few, if any, did, then we are still waiting till 2015 to eight, just 10 years. I mean, it's not nothing. Right. And uh, yeah, so you, you've sort of hit, you hit the nail on the head there. I think, you know, to, to get the definitive answer of who may end up with CTE or some sort of neurodegenerative issue, yeah. it's going to take another 30 or 40 years. Yeah. Um, that, that's, not, that's not to say that we won't learn things along the way that can be applied to clinical care. So people will do various studies right. along the way. Um, that will really inform kind of what this long-term issue looks like. Um, but the the true definitive work um, that you touched on is like, it's this prospective longitudinal. So getting yeah. somebody before they are injured and tracking them for as long as you need to, to, to really understand. Exactly. It's kind of these new two years. You were, you do a, you, you're a professor of physical medicine and rehabilitation. So does that, does your biomechanics uh background coming to come into that or is that why is that why you lean towards that why you're teaching there is it just because you want to have a treatment for neural just general yeah. neural issues so my my primary appointment at university of michigan is in the school of kinesiology right. um and so that's kind of my what we would term my academic home i spend yeah. all my time here um my appointments in physical med and rehab and neurology are what some people would call a dry appointment or an adjunct appointment. So um, um, the, those units were just very generous when I came here and, and they gave me, um, gave me those appointments, but I may lecture. Uh, I, I collaborate with a lot of people in both of those units from a research perspective. Um, I may give a guest lecture on occasion, um, but that's about the extent of, of the time. Okay. So what, what do you, what do you teach in kinesiology about say the brain, like young brain is not, Hopefully not moving more. Well, hopefully it is hopefully moving a bit, but not moving a lot. So kinesiology seems like weird. I don't know if we were like yeah, yeah. So the, the impact, the uh, the impact, the behavioral, the biomechanics obviously are the biggest yeah. there. But I mean, but the brain itself is not moving. So what do you do you learn about just hitting impact? Yeah, so kinesiology is, um, I like to describe it as kind of the crossroads of a lot of different disciplines. Yeah. Um, so I teach within the athletic training program here. Um, I, I, depending on what my teaching assignments are, I sometimes teach a class that's specific to concussion. So I'll spend an entire semester talking about different topics within the field. So it could be injury epidemiology, it could be sideline assessment, it could be long-term effects, kind of, it's, it's kind of a broad, um, a broad course. Um, but we do have a lot of individuals in our school um, that do biomechanics. We have people that do um, motor control. We do people, uh, we have people that do exercise physiology and all of those things in some way kind of tie in. I don't do that work specifically. Um, I do, I don't do the biomechanics work anymore, but I don't, other people are much better at it than I am. Um, but all those things sort of kind of overlay into the concussion space. Um, so we talked about some of the biomechanics work that I've done. Um, trying to understand human physiology, to understand the pathophysiology of concussion, and then maybe what rehab would look like or exercise interventions as, as a rehab. Um, motor control, um, if you think about some of the balance or the, the gait test that we give, that's a motor control issue um, you know, for concussion. So trying to under, understanding how that works at a, um, like a neuronal level, um, how we maintain balance, how we walk. Um, that can inform some of the work that we do in the concussion space. That, so that's, it's, that's a, it's, it's a good, yeah, it's a great unit to be in just because we have so many intersecting um, themes. Um, I've worked with people in our sport management program around um, the economics of concussion. So an athlete has an injury, they're out for a certain number of days. Um, you know, what does that cost the athlete? What does that cost the team? Um, and so kind of trying to understand some of that work, um, I've had conversations with people around the policy policies, uh, around concussion, whether that's removal from play or different protocols or those sorts of things. So 
Um, I feel really fortunate to be in the in the unit just because of all the diversity of, of knowledge um, that's here and then I can tap into when I have these questions. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. So because um, I guess the policy is why your policy protocol is why you're asked by the Washington Post to talk about NFL to protocols, but we don't get into that because it's obviously a touchy subject or some. So no one talk about that. But um oh uh, yeah, so you mentioned the, the three three cores of your of the concussion center. So in the research core, that's I guess where you live is to put is more more not live lives you live in your but in your office or in your kinesiology, but you know that's your is that already you did you direct the whole thing or do you do do you still do research? And what uh, is is exciting is exciting there now. Yeah, so my my official role is director of the center. So I sort of oversee kind of all of it. Um, I would say I probably spend the majority of my time on uh, the research and then the outreach and engagement is probably where I spend the majority yeah. of my time. Um, only because um, I'm I I'm licensed in the state as a as an athletic trainer, but I am not um, I'm not actively engaged in clinical care. So. I let the cl the clinicians are the experts, and I let them um, do the thing that they do best. Um, and you know, we talk to them a lot, and and how we can um, yeah. how we can learn from them, and how we can give information back to them. But they they really kind of um, they they handle that portion of it. Um, I would say at, at a center level, from the research perspective, um, you know, we are focused on kind of this personalized um, uh, healthcare around concussion, and we have. Kind of four big themes that we think about um, around it, and that's injury prevention, um, injury identification, injury management, and then long-term effects. So, and then we have kind of sub-projects within each of those that we're that we're working on, um, and we feel that that structure kind of encompasses the full life of the injury, if as it were, right? Um, so, if we can prevent injuries, that's really the best case uh, yeah. because then, then we don't have to deal with any of the the downstream effects. Yeah. Um, but they're going to happen. So how do we quickly identify somebody, get them out of play? Um, and then once they've been identified, how do we manage that injury? Um, so, you know, maybe not even 10 years ago, maybe even five or six years ago, we were still, somebody had a concussion and we would say, you know, no TV, don't interact with anybody, turn the lights out, yeah, go to a dark closet. And we really found that that has really, um, really detrimental effects on a person's psychology yeah. Um, so as the concussion symptoms start to come down over, you know, the weeks after injury, these psychological symptoms start to come up and disentangling those two things becomes really challenging. So we've, we've moved away from that model. Um, and we're using exercise as an early intervention, usually within 24 to 48 hours, we'll start somebody on some really light exercise. Um, and that's showing to improve outcomes. And that's been a great, that's been great for everybody. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, I think the question a lot of people are asking is, what are the long-term effects? Yeah. And trying to really understand that, um, it, not to say that there are no long-term effects, it's clear, you know, CT is a thing, it's out there, um, yeah. but who gets it, why they get it, and then how can we prevent it, I think, are the big questions that we're trying to answer right now. Yeah, there's, there's as you kind of, you didn't mention there, at least to do say, one concussion, although I'm not good, do not have to try to hit your head, but one can, one concussion does not does not mean CT. So, and I think there's a lot of history about anybody who gets concussion is going to develop CT or any football player. Football players say, "Oh, they've had one; they must have had a million. But that's not necessarily true. And uh, I think it's just getting getting the main information out there about about your about about concussion and brain injury in general and what effects it can have. So obviously, as we mentioned, it's still going to take a long time to sort out what that means long term. But uh, you know, as it's a hand to say, be patient with people that have concussion or brain injury. Can't really don't you want to say be patient and waste a bunch of the time, but uh, their life. But uh, you know, but still, and there's you need to understand that it's not everything is not built right away. So you have to let nature that let let, uh, let the like science do its thing and just be and you know i hate to say be patient because i just said don't but you know be patient yeah and, uh, <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's no there's no way to no way away for me to think of and say it but uh i keep moving my hands over this i'm distracting so so i i'll just throw in there you know the first 
I mean, we can argue about when was CTE first identified in the yeah. scientific literature and the Martland paper from 1929. And, but really- Is that, is that uh, the Pugilistica dementia one? Yeah, dementia pugilistica, punch drunk. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was the, that was kind of, we, we can look back and go, oh, that was the first paper. But really up until about 2006, when Bennett yeah. and Mahler identified it in Mike Webster, no one really thought about it too much. Yeah. So what, what I term is kind of like the modern CT or the modern concussion era, mm. I, I mark personally as, um, I mark it as actually January of 2007, um, because that's when CTE ended up on the front page of the New York Times. And it was, it was because the second CTE case, Bennett had found the second CTE case. Um, and then the US was involved in two um, military conflicts overseas and TBI concussion was the signature injury of those, of those conflicts. Yeah. Yeah. So you had this civilian interest from the sport side and then you had this military interest. Um, and then that's really when um, research funding became available, when publications started to take off. So if you think about 2007, 15 years ago, yeah. almost 16 years ago, we're not that far into this, no, like no. from a dedicated effort. And if you line that up against something like Alzheimer's disease, which was identified a hundred and some odd years ago, um, cardiac disease, which we still don't have a strong handle on. Like there's a lot yeah. of things that have been around a lot longer. Um, you know, we have a ways to go. And um, I, I understand people's frustrations. They want answers. I get it. Yeah. Um, but science is not known to move fast, um, but no. people are working hard to solve these yeah. issues. Exactly. I mean, that's just, it's just so important for, and I was fully kind of, and then what do you, what do you think like the most important thing you would like this, not only at the University of Michigan staff and students and faculty to know, but in Detroit students, Detroit public school students and faculty and staff, but what would you like just to the general public know about brain injury? And then, yeah, brain injury in general, just because. Yeah, of you know, I think over my career of 20 some years, you know, I've seen a, a huge shift in the way we think about concussions. I think early on, um, we would say, you know, got his bell rung or clearing the cobwebs or some colloquial phrase. And we've really shifted away from that. We recognize concussion as a brain injury. Um, but I, I would encourage people, I, I think two things. One, um, you know, I think people need to stay active in their, in a sport and what sport that is, is up to the individual, um, to choose, but, um, I would just caution them from using concussion as a reason to participate in no sports, right? Exactly. I don't want the risk of a concussion. Therefore I'm not going to do anything. And mm -hmm. I think that's a really bad choice because we know what happens when you're inactive and sit on the couch all day. Exactly. Um, yeah. so, but the choice to participate in a sport, you know, that that's up to the, you know, if it's a child, it's up to the child and the family to make the decision. What is the right sport for that individual? For some people that's football. And for some other people that's golf and both are great choices, but yeah. that's an individual choice you have to make. Right. Um, and then kind of, I think with that, if an injury happens, you know, recognize it for what it is, get yourself out of the, out of play and, and get some good healthcare. Um, and, and I, I understand that not everybody has access to good health healthcare and there's some challenges around that. And that's one of the things we're working on. Um, but as, as best you can, um, you know, try to seek help. And speaking of, speaking of good health, yeah, this is actually not a final question. So if I'm one of the 50, 150, 1000 students at the University of Michigan and I, and I do, I don't know, fall or walk in somebody and drops like books on my head or something like that. Like, I mean, you know, it's like, when I feel like in my head, I feel a bit boozy or feel I feel a bit off for a second. It to, to hurts. To, and I maybe could have gotten a concussion, but who knows? What, what, what do I do? Where do I go? Yeah. So here at the University of Michigan, um, students can go um, to student health. It's called University Health Services. Um, and uh, so they can go there to seek help. Um, our medical campus is um, it directly abuts against the, the central campus. So um, we have an adult um, emergency room and we have an adult or a child emergency room, pediatrics. So depending on the age, uh, they can go to either. Um, I would say concussion is 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 99% of the time not an emergency injury. 
Um, but if they're the only one open and you're concerned, then that's the place to go. But student health is, is great. Uh, and then depending on your case and your specific needs, they may refer you on to um, our neurosport clinic, or they may refer you on to somebody else that can, that can take care of you. And of course, the outreach section core of the uh, of the Michigan Concussion University of Michigan Concussion Center. That's a great thing. That word difficulty saying concussion, but I do. But uh, yeah, but uh, they'll always just be there for good to make good information and good uh, and good outreach as generally as I can say. Is that I've never been there. Yeah, so I would I would encourage people to um, go to our website um, concussion.umich.edu. Um, you know, we put as much as we can up on on the website as far as findings and press releases and those things. Um, they can find us on Twitter um, at umich concussion u m i c h concussion all one all one word, um, and uh, we we post on there uh, daily, just about daily uh, with with the latest findings. Um, and, you know, but it's, um, you know, we're just continually trying to put information out um, for people to read. You know, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of people working really hard at this and we're just trying to um, be an amplifier for all that great work. And I think they have a great spokesman. So, uh, so for, for, uh, for anybody, uh, this is right. I found, I found, a, I reached out to you to seeing them on, on Twitter and I have read the article, the Washington Post article, which is October 5th. Believe, you know, and uh, so just so. just new after to his injury, and uh, so it just just uh, it was a great great article. So I encourage you to read that at the Washington Post, and uh, Ray and and do Fred Machine, or even if you're not, to visit our concussion, concussion center Twitter, which is at UMIS Concussion, and and from there I'm sure there's a link to uh, to the homepage for the Michigan Concussion Center. University of Michigan, but uh, with all that said, I have to thank you, thanks Steve, thank you for the uh, great interview and for helping all the people that in D in Michigan and elsewhere sort out all this right. all issue. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for your listeners for tuning in. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks.